Dishy Dev Alahan has been charming customers in his corner shop for 25 years. Actor Jimmy Hakishan is celebrating a quarter of a century on Corrie this week. Quarter of a century? Uh, uh, he has hardly, hardly changed, does he? And one of his most memorable storylines was, of course, his illicit one-night stand with Deirdre. <sighs> <sighs> Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm fine. But, you know, um, if I'm being honest, I think any minute now, Gina's gonna come knocking on our door. Oh, yeah, right. I suppose we should get moving. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I tell you what, I'm, I'm a bit upset. Uh, we were all taken to a place that we might have remembered. Then. <laughs> <laughs> and he was rushing for the cab, wasn't he? <laughs> and then, of course, she's left feeling ashamed in those days. I don't know whether it's the same now. Would you say it's the same now? I was having flashbacks, <laughs> that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> were you a bit of a one-night stander in your heyday? Well, I think in my teens, I was not particularly out of choice, to be quite honest. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you but, never called back. Uh, no, never called back. Oh. Never called back. In fact, my husband, I think, was the first person who ever called me back, like, <laughs> the next morning on the dot of, like, 9am at a kind of... Oh. Ex... I think that's why I married him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you know, my dad died very young. I think I've said that mm. before, when I was 15. And I think I, I spent a few misspent years mm. thinking that that was a good way of getting a kind of central male role back into my body. Uh, you know, back into my... <laughs> Yeah, and missing. No, but I think you do yeah. you try and replace. You know, yeah. that's kind of how you try and get affection back. But 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 I think the thing that's changed enormously, <laughs> and I'm really happy about it, is that then it was a shameful thing for a girl. It was a shameful thing to have a one night stand. For a guy, it was a score. <laughs> Yeah. And, and I think that was very much the situation. And so you were embarrassed. You'd sort of come out, you'd go, oh, I can't believe I did that. And then if they wouldn't call, you'd feel really walk bad. Of shame. Because yeah. you had the walk of shame, you know, all of those things. And I think that's changed. I think that sex is kind of normalised. And I think because boys and girls are so much more comfortable with each other and boys and boys, et cetera, et cetera, sexually, I think that it's become not such a big deal. Mm. And I think they're actually less likely to even do it. I mean, the worst sex you ever have is on a, a one night stand. You know, sex, yeah. I think, for most women particularly, is something that kind of gets better. Yeah. It's interesting than... what you were saying there about, about wanting that affection and... and it, because my daughters, say they know somebody that is, like, having lots of different partners, they will automatically go, oh, I wonder why, I wonder what's mm, going on, I yeah. wonder why... They would never use the kind of words that the were used. Oh, yeah. yes, um, yeah. but, but apparently it's not a one-night stand, though, it's a hook-up. It's yeah. a hookup. Or get with. Or get with. Yeah, or get yeah. with. And, we um, speak it much. Oh, so talking to. <laughs> I think talking to <laughs> as well. But um, my eldest was saying, yeah, you know, like, we girls don't judge each other for it at all. And I said, so what about boys? And she said, oh, no, that's still the same as when you were... When you uh, she, well, she thinks boys still judge. She's still the same. You can't win if you haven't. There's something wrong with you. If you have, there's something wrong with you. So I thought, oh, so nothing's changed. But oh, that's I a don't bit think depressing. So. I but it's changed between women. Mm. It's between mm. changed in terms of judging each other. Yes, which yeah. is wonderful. I just think there's more of a. <laughs> yeah. Look, I've got girls and I've, I've raised them um, in a way that, you know, they've got complete body autonomy. I want them to see uh, relationships and sex. I want them to see it as fun. Yeah. You know, I was raised in my Filipino Catholic household. My mum told me if I kissed a boy, they'd spit in my mouth. Oh. Oh. Just that's, true. that's a whole new kind of contraception. It's niche, it's niche. <laughs> but, that, but I just oh. I remember being really confused by it. That was, was just, a surprise. It was just phlegm and that was it. And it, it was... It was <laughs> It was planted there to just put me off, which, you know, just But it just didn't make you me. curious. Well, it uh -huh. just confused me. And here's the thing, it's, you know, like, you know all these guys, we've heard about all these guys having these one-night stands, but who are they having them with? Yeah. You know, we yeah. play a role in this too, and I yeah. love that we've got this emancipation that's happening now. Why the shame? I think shame? it's why it's... you have... Why you have a one-night stand. If you're doing it because you need the affirmation, then that's a sad... Thing. But if you're doing it because you feel like it, you love it, then why on earth shouldn't you? You know, and I think well, that's Judy, what's changed. Judy, you love it. Judy, <laughs> Judy, 
Judy, take the stage. <laughs> No, no, no. I suppose there's difference because <laughs> I, we were having this conversation off air and I, was, I think, like, I, I interpreted the one-night stand as if you went on a date and it's the first time you've met them and you, it's just been great and you've had sex and whatnot. Um, and then, obviously, there's another way of looking at it. Do you think it. that's changed, then? Because there I used think, to be judgment about Yeah, that. I think it's changed. When I think about... I was grown up in a, a West Indian um, Christian household, so it was like, no bother with it. Yeah, it was just <laughs> that simple. Um, and, and, and so it was... It, I was much more reserved, actually, believe it or not. No, we I don't. Was. <laughs> yes, I was. And I think now, when I think about it, I'm not even thinking of the youngest. I think the youngest are very much, like you said, open. They're open with sexuality, they're having um, conversations and much more empowered. But I think the women over 40, from what I'm seeing, is feeling much How old much are you more... again, Jenny? I am 44. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my prime. Um, and I think they're... Cos they probably grew up in a time where all of that wasn't acceptable. You'd get labelled, you'd get a name, yeah. you'd get a reputation. So I think women now over a particular age are feeling more confident in their body. You know, they're doing their... Living their best life, you know. You know what they, we want. They know what they want. So they're much more comfortable in saying, well, actually, yeah, I think he's quite nice. We've had a good evening. Why shouldn't I? Why shouldn't yeah. I? And I think that, actually... You know, embracing good sex is really important yep. for women because I feel a lot of women, when they were younger, had sex that wasn't great at all. <laughs> and it was always about pleasuring somebody else and you not being pleasured. It's your body. Your body's supposed to feel good. You're supposed to love upon yourself and have that kind of, like, love boundaries. Upon yes, love upon yourself. Yeah, love upon yourself. And have that boundaries Ooh. to know, like, whether you do want or you don't want it, but it's up to you. You make a choice. As long as you have the choice, then do it. I should have had more sex when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs>